Welcome to the Under the Juniper Tree podcast. Juniper Tree Ministries is the first stage of a healing ministry, promoting faith and healing through the Word of God. The Word of God is alive and active, and verse-by-verse teaching can bring whole healing through His holiness. Now here's Pastor Michael with this week's message in the book of Daniel, Eternal Interruptions. We're going to be continuing Daniel this week. Uh, We're going to talk about eternal interruptions. And there are great times in history uh, that God used men to bring divine interruption to things. Men like John Huss, Martin Luther, John Calvin, the Wesley brothers, they stirred up history. Events like the Azusa Street Revivals, the Welsh Revival, the Cuban and Brownsville Revivals of recent. Of course, the breaking of history when God came in the flesh to save us from our sins. But there will be a day when God will come himself again, and he will cause an eternal interruption. Last time we talked about the craziness and the stuff going on in the last days. We talked about what scholars said, and the other side, and what other scholars said, and we talked about lions and leopards and bears, oh my, the end time stuff. If you want to check it out, you can check out some of the end times on the last podcast, but now comes the greatest eternal interruption ever. It's in Daniel chapter 7. And it says, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 1, and we'll contrast that to Daniel 7 here in verse 9 says in Revelation 1, and starting in verse 13, And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like a blazing fire. Now let's look at uh, verse 10 here of Daniel 7. A river of fire was flowing, coming out before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Now Revelation chapter 20, starting at verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. This is sad. Now, here's the problem that most Old Testament prophets had. They longed to look to the day that you and I are living in now. Daniel looked at this and wondered where the rapture, didn't wonder where the rapture was, the new heavens and the new earth, because he's not dividing it the way we would. Daniel doesn't see the rapture, the millennial kingdom. He sees the Antichrist, the destroyer, Satan stealing, killing, and destroying, like it says in John chapter 10, verse 10. He sees terror, destruction, and mayhem. He doesn't know what we know. Then this is what he saw. The Ancient of Days. The Lord coming in to interrupt the mess that was made by Satan and the Antichrist. He saw the kingdom of men and how cruel they were, and he saw the kingdom of God interrupting all of that and the Ancient of Days in his holiness coming down. 
Look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 45, because God interrupted the Antichrist schemes there. It says here, this is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is true, and its interpretation is trustworthy. We're taught in life as children to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. There are preterists today who teach that there's no kingdom on the earth. For the first 250 years of the church, there were no voices contesting the coming of Christ, that he would set up his reign for a thousand years on the earth. Not until Origen was there another view, and the amillennial preterist view went from there. The Bible, and those who heard him speak for 40 days, and were there on things concerning the kingdom, they say in Acts chapter 1 verse 6, Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Jesus didn't answer and say, you dummies. He said, and look at this, he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. He didn't say that it wasn't going to happen. Let me read what he said again. It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Now verse 11 says, Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire. The other beasts had stripped, been stripped of their authority, but were not allowed to live for a period of time. You know, this could be the millennial kingdom. Now, I love this next verse. This next verse, verse 13, it is amazing. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like the Son of Man. Coming with the clouds of heaven, he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. This is the only place Son of Man is referred to as the Messiah, and it's Jesus' favorite name for himself throughout the Gospels. He calls himself Son of Man throughout the whole Gospels. Matthew 9, 6 says, But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, take your mat, and go home. Matthew 10, 23, When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Matthew 12, 8, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Matthew 12, 40. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew 16, 27 through 28. For the Son of Man is coming to his Father's glory with his angels, and then he'll reward each person according to what they did. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Matthew 19, 28. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Matthew 24, 27. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. There are 78 times in the Gospels Jesus called himself the Son of Man. The religious leaders knew what he was saying, and it probably fueled their anger greatly. Here is one time he's referred to in this verse, Caiaphas confronted him and said, Are you the Son of God? And, he, and in this verse he says, You have said so, Jesus replied, 
But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. In Revelation chapter 1, Jesus was described as the Ancient of Days. So he's face to face with himself. In John chapter 1, verse 1, the Greek says the Word was face to face with God and the Word was God. We see it happening here with the Son of Man brought before the Ancient of Days. It will be great when one day Jesus is in charge of everything. We see in Daniel God being face to face with God, the Son being face to face with the Father, the Son being the Father face to face. This verse is amazing to me. And when we sing the song Ancient of Days, it means so much more to me as I sing it because of this, the Ancient of Days being face to face with God the Father. They are the same yet they are three different persons. It's amazing, and it is awesome. Now, verse 14. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Sovereign power over everything. Boy, I look forward to that. No more government-run health care. No more child surfaces, corruption, greed, lies. They'll all be gone. I cannot wait. Verse 15. I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit, and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. The language is like a knife in a sheath. You know, he's 80 years old, just the sheath. The New Testament says carcasses are sheaths. Don't get too attached to your body because it is wearing down. Verse 16 says, I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all this, so he told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. If you read this from time to time and have no clue what it says, see, Daniel didn't either. And he's asking for directions. And it's an easy answer in two verses. So let's look at the answer here. It says in Verse 17, the four great beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth. So that's future tense. Remember that, that's future tense. They're going to arise in the future. Now here's the important part, verse 18. But the holy people of the Most High will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. That's an easy answer. See, that's all we need. But not for Daniel. He needs more information. So, you see, I love eternal interruptions in my life. I do enjoy them often. Maybe you're going through something bad at this time and you need an eternal interruption. I hear people say it all the time, even believers. You know, the Lord doesn't work in the lives of people like he did during biblical times. Jesus doesn't perform miracles anymore. He doesn't answer prayers literally. The gifts were just for those days, you know, visions and dreams and all that stuff just faded away. I hear people say that all the time. Well, they have, you know, if that's what you think. You're putting God in a box and you're selling him short. You see, our God is the God of eternal interruptions. He steps out of time and into time to help us eternally, he interrupts history and all that should take place. Because we may have an impossible situation, but God can interrupt it and make it become possible. We may have the whole world falling in on us, but God can interrupt it and come lift us up. The Lord God can step into your circumstance and interrupt the pain and the hurt and bring it to joy. The Bible says, in all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. 
Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you're receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Joy unspeakable through the promises of God. Yes. He is the Son of Man. He is the great interrupter. And what I want to do today is I want to pray for you. I want to pray that if you have something going on, something bad in your life, something you're struggling with, I want to pray he interrupts it, that he steps in, that he interrupts it, and that he moves mightily in it. So let me pray for you now. Lord, for anyone listening to this today, Lord, I know you are the great interrupter. I pray, Father, that whatever situation someone might be facing right now, Lord, that you would step in, that you would interrupt it, and that you would make possible what would be impossible. If it be disease, if it be finances, if it be something that's going on with self-worth or depression, Lord, I pray you would step in and that you would move in a mighty way. Take care of them now by your authority, by the blood of Christ, and by who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. If you enjoyed this message of the Under the Juniper Tree podcast, please like and subscribe. The Juniper Tree podcast hopes that we bring whole healing through verse-by-verse teaching and through His holiness. God bless you, and have a great day.